to kind of figure out um, what the connections are between the elements, um, especially if you already have a file built and you want to understand how it was built. So in this case, uh, we have a set of, of uh, south, west, north, and east edges, and those are linked to other sketches. Um, one sketch uh, dealing with the, the column grid, and another sketch dealing with the partitions. Um, this would be walls, and it also includes the slab outline. Um, we can go one, one deeper. And so basically, you can just keep climbing through the tree. If you want to close down uh, a part of the tree, you can just double-click it again, and it, and it closes right back down. Um, and if you notice, I'm using the same uh, navigation tools that I use in the 3D environment. Um, I'm using my, my middle mouse to, to move that, that tree uh, view around. And I'm holding the middle down and clicking the... The, uh, the right button to zoom in and out. So in this case, uh, we can see the sketch is, has an output point, and that point is linked to a line, and this line, these lines all seem to be linked to this polyline. And this will become a lot clearer once we build this from scratch, how this is, why this is connected in this fashion from sketch to point to line to polyline and then finally to surface. So I want to I wanna illustrate um, how this model, uh, which, in, which if you zoom in um, on the different portions of the model, you see that, you know, we have, we have fully, uh, we have fully detailed structure. We have the, the, the beams, um, not only do we have accurate uh, profiles of all the beams? We also have how they meet up, and we could, if we wanted to go one step further, we could start modeling connection plates and and whatever else. Um, so there's there's a fair amount of detail in this model, but we can always go back to the elements uh, that we that we built in the beginning and change one aspect of that, and the whole model will update. So um, I purposely use this model to demonstrate that because when you start getting into larger models, um, the update process, well, it may take a little longer than we have here. <laughs> um, but just know that it's going through a lot of uh, complex geometric calculations to update this model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click inside sketch one. And I'm going to enter the sketch. Now you may notice that um, if you're if you're following along with me, you may not see anything initially, and that's probably because the geometric set uh, that you have is hidden. So if you want to, you can just right click and go to hide show, and that unhides the geometric set. Now, if you if if I zoom in here, you notice that I have an angle and it's set at 15 degrees. So that angle is driving the overall configuration of this sketch. And if I, I'm going to unhide some of these lines so you can see the outline. So here's, here's the overall outline of, of the building in green here. And if I, if I go in and double click this 15 degrees, and change that to 30 degrees. Click OK. So now you'll see the sketch outline, if I look from the top view, has changed. It's been updated based on the 30 degrees. And the rest of my model is in red, which is indicating it needs to be updated. Now as soon as, um, right now I'm in sketch mode, and as soon as I exit this sketch, um, it's going to run through a series of updates. Um, you're not going to be able to see the model literally updating, um, but just know that uh, it's going through a process of of checking all its rules and maintaining the logic that you've built into the model. 
So if we hit the Exit Workbench tool, that's over here on the upper right, um, it's going to be about half a minute or so, um, and it's basically going to look at at all these these edge conditions. Um, it's going to it's going to maintain the the tops and bottoms of these these columns, which have which have been limited up to the the slab, and basically everything is going to to change based on this overall outline sketch. So while that's updating, um, I just want to quickly uh, go to last part of my presentation and talk and share a little bit the uh, one of the questions that came in from last week's webinar. Um, someone asked from last week, based on the model that was he, that we used last time. Uh, what is the site component? Um, they noticed that at the top of the tree there was um, there was a the project, and then there was a site, and then there was a building. And they were asking, you know, what's the purpose of this site uh, component in the tree, and is it mandatory? Well, the site component um, is a new new feature in in V1 R4, um, which basically allows for compatibility with the IFC standard. Um, which is a file format that is used throughout any VIM environment. Um, and so this is a file format that uh, we use to import and export um, other BIM models from, from various other um, BIM modelers, including Revit and ARCHICAD and the like. Um, and also I just want to point out, whenever, whenever you send in questions, uh, Generally, if there's an answer uh, that we can uh, we can provide for you on the website, uh, we'll locate that. So in this case, um, this is the documentation that's online, and here's here's a brief explanation of the site object, and um, just showing um, how to insert it, where the tools are located, and um, and what you can do with it. So just so, just so you know, there's a lot of information up online, and uh, this is uh, this is a good resource. The um, the document the documentation, uh, if you want to locate it, is is one way to to locate it is on the wiki. If you go to uh, under resources, there's a V1R4 documentation link, and if you click that, um, it's going to ask you for your us username and password. So you're going to have to have a login for the wiki um, to, to access the documentation. But once you do that, um, there's a lot of resources for for questions uh, of that sort. So, all right. Go back to a model, and now it's been updated. You can see we now have that 30-degree condition, and that's changed everything else. Uh, the dimensions of these edges are still what I set them at originally, at 50 feet and 100 feet. But now the, the whole angle of the building, these exterior walls, this roof, all the equally spaced beams that we have, and all the columns, all of it has been relocated based on that one small sketch change. So you see even the columns, for instance, are limited up to those. Everything, everything works as it worked before. All the logic is still there. You've just gone back to kind of the beginning and, and changed that one aspect. So um, now I think the best, the best strategy is for you to, um, for us to start building it. Um, this might go a little quick for, for many people, um, but again, I will be recording it. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll put it up online very soon on YouTube, along with the, the, the recording from the first session. So um, let's start by going to File New and scroll down to part 
Um, if you if you're familiar with the interface, you can you can get to 